Grade 6 Math, number 13.5, Problem Solving Using a Formula. It's going to be our last video for 6th grade math. We can solve problems of perimeters, areas, surface areas, and volumes by using formulas, formulae. Using a formula is like using a recipe to cook or bake. You just follow the instructions in order, and we're all set. Anyone who's watched my videos before know that when we do word problems, we like to choose a strategy. We can work backwards, we can solve a simpler problem, we can choose an operation, we can use a model or a formula, or we could draw a diagram. We're going to be using formulas in this one because that's what this video is all about. All right? So, let me show you here. I'll step back a little bit. That's Bob's swimming pool. He wants to fill it up for the summer. So Bob is filling his swimming pool with water. He knows there's 7.5 gallons of water in each cubic foot. So how many gallons of water will he need if his pool measures 15 feet wide, 30 feet long, and is 6 feet deep? Okay, so here's Bob. If you've seen my videos before, you know that Bob is two-dimensional, so that he's flat when he turns sideways. He's really quite a nice-looking fellow when he's facing you. So think, what do we need to find well, we need to find the total gallons of water to fill Bob's pool. So what information do we need to find this? We need the length, width, height, which we're going to use for the depth, for how deep his pool is, and how many gallons there are in a cubic foot of water. How will we use this information? Well, we'll use the volume formula for a rectangular solid figure, then we'll multiply that number by the amount of water gallons in a cubic foot. So because Bob's pool is a rectangle, we're going to use V equals LWH, volume equals length times width times height, okay? And because the pool is six feet deep, we're going to use that for the height, okay? So even though it's underground, it's still a height, okay? So here's Bob filling his pool with water. It's going to take him a while since he's just using a hose, isn't it? So the volume is equal to the length, the width, and the height. Well, we saw from the word problem that it's 30 feet long, it's 15 feet wide, and 6 feet deep. So we use those numbers and plug them into the formula. 30 times 15 times 6, and it's all in foot measures, which is great because we want all our measurements to match, don't we? We don't want to multiply inches times yards or times feet. We want them all to be the same measure. Well, we do 15 times 6 right here, and we get 90. So now we've got 30 times 90. 30 times 90 is 2,700. So we know the volume is 2,700 square feet. Wow, that's pretty big, isn't it? So the cubic foot volume of Bob's pool is 2,700. We saw from the word problem that there's 7.5 gallons of water in each cubic foot. So in each cubic foot means we need to multiply the 2,700 by 7.5. And we do that. We multiply the 5 times the 0, the 0, the 7, and the 2, and we get 1, 3, 5, 0, 0. We move one space over because now we're multiplying in the tens place, right? We multiply the 7 by the 0, the 0, the 7, and the 2, and we get 1, 8, 9, 0, 0. Now because there was one hop in the multiplication problem, we're going to put one hop over for the decimal in the product. And we come up with 20,250. So... That means there's 20,250 gallons of water in his pool. That's a lot of water. I know there's people that are desperate for water, and this guy's just filling his pool with 20,000 gallons of it. Bob. Wow. Okay. Tala is covering a lampshade with new fabric. The shade has a diameter of 12 inches. Okay? So across here it's 12 inches, and it's 18 inches tall this way. So what will be the dimension of the piece of fabric she'll need to cover the shade? So think, what do we need to find? We need to find the total measurement of the fabric that's going to cover that lampshade, right? What information do we need to find it? Well, it's 18 inches tall and the diameter is 12 inches. And how will we use this information? We'll use the diameter to find the circumference of the lampshade, and we'll use the circumference as the length of the dimension. Ah, because whatever this measures around, if this lampshade was open as a big, long rectangle, the circumference would be the same as the length. See? So we're going to use circumference equals pi times d. 
pi times the diameter, okay? We know the diameter is 12, so we multiply 3.14 times 12, and we get 37.68, all right? So we're going to round this off because we did pi. We know it's approximately 37.68. This is 37 and 68 hundredths of an inch. 68 hundredths of an inch is pretty tiny. 68 one hundredths of an inch. So I rounded it off to 38 inches because she's using fabric and she probably even needs to overlap a little bit, right, on the seam. So Tyla needs a piece of fabric that's 18 inches wide, okay, or tall, and 38 inches long, and it should cover that, shouldn't it? In fact, if this was really, really happening, she'd want to get it to be a little bit more than 18 inches so that she could overlap it over the top and over the bottom to make smooth edges, right? So this is just a math problem. It's not perfect, all right? So that's it. That's the end of sixth grade math. I want to thank you for watching my sixth grade math video series. I hope I helped you in some way, and good luck to you. I hope you have a great vacation. I'll see you in seventh grade, and the whole gang says goodbye. Bye.